Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel once again. So recently I got sent this Flash Forge Adventure 4 to try out and test, and I haven't gotten around to it yet, but today we're going to. So first let's just get this opened up and let's see what's inside the box. Now that's a beast of a machine. This thing is huge. Let's get this out of here and we'll get it set up on the table so we can take a better look at it. Okay guys, so here it is. I'm gonna remove all this plastic and this wrapping that it's all sealed up in. Get a better look at this. Okay guys, so here it is. So this is all that it came with. There's not an instruction manual. There's really nothing to go off of. So it's kind of hard to even tell you a whole lot about this when I can't even read exactly how to do it. But it says it's 240 volts, but I don't have an outlet for a 240 volts. So I just used a regular one and we'll turn it on and see what happens. But Apparently it turns on, so I guess maybe you don't need a 240 volt? I don't know. And since there's no manual and all I got is some prints, it's kind of hard to, hard to say. I have a brand new unopened SanDisk flash drive, but I highly doubt there's any software on here. It did come with an extra nozzle though and some tools but if you look at it, it looks like it's already been used or it was tested. But we're gonna file up a, a print and we're gonna see what happens. So let's go ahead over to some software and I'll actually go to Flash Forge's website and we'll take a look and see what they have and if they have software that there is to download for this. It did say too that it would come with a spool of filament, but there's nothing here and in the box there was nothing else so I don't know where where else it could be but it's not here okay guys so here we are over at flash forges website now over here we have the flash forge adventure 4 3d printer um, it gives all the specs on it Auto leveling, magnetic removable build platform, quick release nozzle, compatible with PLA, PETG, ABS, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, when you go to software, I did already download the flash, the flash print 462. And when I in installed it, it did give me an option to upgrade to 4.6.4 version, which does include the Adventure 4. So that was good. However, under the user manual, there isn't one for Adventure 4. So if I click on Adventure 3, it looks like it's pretty similar. However, I'm not exactly sure if it's the same. So I can't really go off of that. So we're just going to wing it. So I already have Flash print loaded up right here, and I got this little Flexi Rex guy that we're gonna try and print today. Um, it's easy to kind of scale and move things around. You just click scale, and you can just click on them and scale them up or down however you want. Same with moving them and whatnot. So I'm not. I don't need supports for this. I already sliced them. I already did this. It said it's gonna take about four hours. And if you go to print, you can see if you need to change the infill, I have it just set at 15% speed. I just kept the defaults. 
However, I did raise the temperature to 215. It was at 210. And I did raise the platform temperature from 45 to 60 because based off of all the other printers that I've done, that seems to be the ideal uh, temperature for me. That might not be the same for everybody and every printer, but for me, that is what has been working the best. So I saved it, so it's just saved in there. I did turn off rafts and supports. So I sliced it all up. I put it on the flash drive that they provided for me. So let's head back on over to the machine and let's get this fired up and let's see if we can get this printing. Okay, so here I am at the main screen. So I'm gonna preheat this. I do already have a roll of filament. So let's go to prepare. We'll go to preheat. And we're going to set this at 215. If you click and hold, that makes it go faster. And we'll start and the build platform will set at 60 and click start. And as you can see, this is going pretty fast. So I don't think this will take any time at all. Okay guys, so since that's preheated, I'm gonna go ahead and load the filament in and they have a nice little door here to do it. And right here, which it's kind of hard to see, is where the filament loads in. So I'll just put it into there. And then back at the home screen, we have load. So I will click on OK. Let's load it in. And as you can see, that's just loading it right into the machine. All right, so now that that's all loaded in, we're gonna try and print this. So we'll go to build, we'll go USB device, and we'll click on the FlexiRex. And here it says two hours and 29 minutes. I was wrong, I thought four hours, uh, I mistake. So we'll go ahead and click build. So I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it is awfully quiet. I can barely hear the fans going in this enclosure machine. So that is one thing I really do like about this. So I'll just run a time lapse so you guys can see this actually get built. But over on the screen, you can see right here that it has two hours and 29 minutes remaining. You can see the percentage right here and you can kind of watch it to see how far along it's gotten. So one of the things that I like that while this is printing, if you click these little three buttons right here, you can go to light and turn it on and off, which is pretty cool if you ask me. I'll leave it off for now so I can see it better in the camera. All right, so this has finished printing. So let's go ahead and get this removed. And it's as easy as that. All we have to do is simply just put this right back on the build plate. and we're ready to start printing again. All right, so here is the final piece that printed. It did print a wall around it. And I think the detail came out really good. You can't really see much of the print lines at all. I can feel it, but it's hard, it's hard to see. Can't really get in closer. But yeah. I think it came out great.
It did take a little longer. I probably could have sped it up a little bit just to test out its capabilities more. And I might do that on the next one just to see how fast I can push this to get it to print. But sometimes slow and steady wins the race and I think it came out great. So there is one feature I'd like to point out that I really like. If you can see right here, it does have a built-in camera. So if I click on camera and I click this little image down here, I can actually go to video and it will show me the print as it printed, which to me is really, really cool. And also, so this can be monitored on polar cloud as well. You can actually see the temperature of the extruder and the print bed, so you can see what's going on. There is a little delay, but it works. I would like to point out that you do have to go into back. You do have to set up your Wi-Fi, or if you have it set up through an ethernet cable, you can do that as well. I just have mine set up through Wi-Fi but you can use Flash Cloud or Polar Cloud. I have mine right now set up through Polar Cloud and you do have to create an account, but that only takes a minute or so. It does have the LED light that you can turn on and off. The fans you can adjust, you can move it, you can check the status of it, which is all pretty straightforward. I would like to point out that I did not have to calibrate any of this when I started printing, but if you do, you can go into calibration and click export mode, mode or normal mode, and that will get you set up if the print isn't coming out right. But I did not have to do any of that. I printed it straight out of the box and that was it. So let me talk about a few things that I like and dislike about this. The one thing that I do like is that it's fully enclosed it does have a HEPA filter installed in this, so you don't have to worry about fumes or anything like that. The print area, it's a good size, and it's 220 by 220 by 250, so that's not bad at all. It could be a little bigger for the size of this machine, but overall, that works just fine. I like how they placed the flash drive right in the front of the machine, and it's not in the back or on the side. It's right there, easy to get to plug right in. I do like the camera that's installed on the inside. It's nice to be able to view the print while it's going. If you are away, you can monitor it. You can check it to make sure everything is going right. And if it's not, you can stop it or cancel it. This machine did come with an extra nozzle. If I want to replace it, all you gotta do is push these in. The nozzle will pop right out and you put the other one right back in its place which is very nice. There's no unscrewing anything. There's no tools involved. And that's one feature that is really, really nice to have. So you don't have to be messing around considering the only tools I really got were these. So definitely a bonus. I do like the placement of the filament holder. It's right on the side built into the machine. It's not hanging up on top, taking up even more space. So all you have to do is slide it in and hit go you are able to connect it to ethernet if you want to with a port right on the side and you have the on and off switch and the power cord right here on the right. I do like the touch screen. It's very easy to use. The buttons are very easy to push. Sometimes the buttons in the corners can be a little hard to get to, but overall it's not bad to build, to prepare. Everything is just one click of a button. It's very easy to use. And considering I didn't get a manual, I, I didn't have a problem one bit figuring this out. I also like that it's very quiet when it's printing. You can't really hear it at all. I was sitting in the other room watching TV and I couldn't even hear the printer going, which is really nice. Some of my other printers that I've used, they can get loud and, and whatnot. This one's very quiet, especially since it is sealed in and enclosed with the door closed and running. It's very hard to hear it. I do like how the build plate is very easy to just take off. All you got to do is lift it up and it's flexible. So it's very easy to remove the prints once you're done. And then you just place it back in place and it is magnetic. 
and you're, you're ready to print again. It's pretty simple. So a few things that I dislike about this machine is number one, the only cord they gave me was for a 220 volt and I don't have that in my house. So I can't really use that cord at all. I wish they would have at least included another cord for 110 volt, but I simply just pulled off a cord from another one of my machines and it worked just fine. So if you're, if that's a concern of yours, I wouldn't worry about it. Even if you have the 220 volt and you don't need that, you need 110, any other cord that goes to a TV or anything like that will work just fine. Another thing that I didn't like is that it barely came with anything. According to the website, it said it came with a one kilogram spool of filament. Mine did not. It says it comes with a user manual. Again, mine did not. I'm not sure if I just got a refurbished one or what, but when I opened it up and looked at it, it looked like it had already been used, which isn't a big deal to me because it still works perfectly fine and the prints came out great. However, if I just bought this and opened it up and I did not get what was told was going to be in the package, I could see getting a little upset about that and you can't even use it right off the bat if you don't have filament and you don't have the proper tools to actually be able to use it the way you want. This is a really big printer for its size. It's kind of hard to tell in the video how big this actually is. And it's quite heavy to move this around. It's, it could be a pain for certain people. It's once you put it somewhere, I, it's not easy to just pick up and move around. It, it does weigh quite a bit. The one other thing I didn't like is that, I mean, I pointed on this before, but it did not come with a user manual. So there might be other features on this machine that I'm just unaware of because I just don't know about them because there isn't a manual that tells me. I can push buttons on the control panel all day long and go off of their website, but even off their website, the manual is only for the Adventure 3 and not the Adventure 4. So there might be some things that are different and I'm just not really sure what they are, so I can't really say any more detail on what's involved with this, but it works. I like the printer, would I recommend it? Yes and no, for I think it's $7.99 US. I think that's a little pricey compared to some of the other machines, but there is no assembly required. You just plug it in, turn it on, and basically start printing. I didn't need to level it at all. I didn't need to do anything else to it, which is pretty nice. So yes, this is a good machine and it's, it's well built and it's sturdy. It's not just cheap and gonna fall apart. Yeah, I think this would be a good buy as long as you got everything in the package that's supposed to be included. But if you get one like mine and it's missing a bunch of parts and pieces, that really doesn't help. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out each week. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.